Well, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, Personality Yoda, and we're now, believe it or not, up to our tenth Five Voices interview. And uh, today we have um, an amazing guy who I know you're going to enjoy getting to meet. A man called Abe Jin, and he is our pioneer creative. Uh, they are at the top of the intellectual food chain. And Abe is coming to us, I think, live from California, where it's about five o'clock in the morning. But for <laughs> most pioneer creatives, that's like mid-morning. He's probably already been up, had a run, you know, done his workout, put his suit, tie, read a few books, got a few, you know, thoughts for the day in. But Abe, welcome to Personality Yoda. Thank you for being my guest today. And uh, sorry for getting you up so early, brother. Well, no worries. It's a, it's a privilege to be with you, Steve. <laughs> well, thank you. I always love talking to introverts, eh, because they, they just give you short answers. And uh, <laughs> it means it's I get to talk a lot more, which is not really the idea. So go on. Tell everyone a little bit about you, um, you know, background, where you grew up, things you studied, things you may have kind of done and work wise. Just give everyone a little sort of pen picture of who our pioneer creative is today, Abe. Eh? Yeah, um, born and raised in the Northwest, primarily in um, Eastern Oregon area called Small Town in Hermiston. Uh, if you imagine, uh, if you can see like a 16-year-old a Asian boy, my first job was a pea harvester. Uh, I got fired because I was driving my combine way too fast as a, as a pioneer. And so uh, <laughs> I didn't know my tendency at that point, but really uh, just love to do things fast. Uh, I was very competitive. Uh, high achievement, um, uh, was uh, a valedictorian in my high school, uh, really studied uh, science um, and the health field because I wanted to be an aspiring doctor, uh, got into uh, just really, uh, you know, different opportunities where I, you know, checked out physical therapy to chiropractic to physical physicians and realized, you know what, after I did some A-B testing on those uh, job <laughs> shadowing opportunities, I found myself, I want to be a chiropractor. I want to bring alignment to wow. people's back and health and wow. holistically engage them. And so that was kind of the trajectory I went to and um, uh, took all of that and uh, kind of did a huge detour, but it was really in focusing on working with people and, and developing and aligning their purpose and vision to uh, applying it into their context. So I did a lot of things in the human uh, development aspects of talent optimization, counseling, um, equipping, training, staff development, uh, which allowed me to start to really work with teams on a global context uh, and to helping them to be uh, enculturated in their context to apply their skill set. Because if you imagine, you know, you can do really well in a local context, but if you take them and you, you know, push them out into the different terrains and different uh, environments and different people. Uh, people that work really well in their local context, all of a sudden when they work on a global context, uh, mm -hmm. they can actually start to act a little bit different with different stressors. And so uh, that really started to enter into the world of Giant. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of my, my uh, first engagement with Giant was because of realizing that uh, leadership and culture and team performance mm -hmm. is everything. And yeah. that often, um, people uh, don't really focus on that when it comes to uh, really creating high-performing teams. So how old are you, Abe? That's that's one question that I'd love to know the answer to. Yeah. You know, it's really funny. People always think that I'm some type of uh, high school or college student when they first <laughs> see me. I have that Asian baby face. I'm 37 years old. Um, if you see my picture back there, I, I have four uh, lively boys. Uh, wow. Eight, uh, six three and seven month. Uh, wow. I, uh, I do a lot of janitorial work. Uh, <laughs> after them. Legos are everywhere. I'm constantly uh, not trying to step on them. And uh, I also am a part-time wrestler. They always ask me to wrestle. Oh. So I'm constantly uh, teaching them. I did a little bit of middle school, high school wrestling cool. in my past. Cool. And so I got to uh, engage <laughs> in a lot of those type of things. I, I'm kind of coaching them to, to, to be uh, going at it. <laughs> I'm actually relieved, Abe, that you are 37 because, like most pioneer creatives, they usually seem to have done vastly more than the rest of us have done, and they fitted it into a lot smaller amount of time. So, um, whenever you ask to tell the story, I mean, that's that's. I love the pea harvesting. Uh, uh, the fact that you were trying driving too fast even at a young age, I just think is absolutely classic. Um, what here's the question I often ask, Abe, particularly for those who are very, very task achievement focused. What do you do for fun? 
What, what's mm. been some of the things over the years? I know that may, you may look at me and go, does not compute. Why would you do fun when you can conquer, win, compete, and accumulate more knowledge and expertise? But just, just in case, is there anything that you kind of either have done for fun or would love to do for fun? You know, um, I think for me, fun is not usually my priority in regards to uh, my scope of work. I have my business that I'm actually trying to build as well as then you, you have to build your family. Yeah. And to being a, you know, a, being a full-time family man with <laughs> with a business is, is more than enough uh, time to really engage. And so you don't have time for yourself as much. But when I do have that space and time, and I'm away from all of the, the craziness of life and uh, being a father. I think uh, what I love to do is read books. I love reading books. Uh, I get so energized when I get a good book that's relevant to my context. And you know what's funny? You ask a pioneer uh, creative, uh, do you read for fun? It's not the <laughs> type of fun that's like fantasy, like scientific fiction. Like it's it's something that's relevant to their world. That's going to be practical in application to their context. And it's, it's, it's something that they can actually use, usually in the work context, uh, in, in being able to uh, help them to achieve in a higher performance. Yeah. So uh, many of the characters we've had on previously, Abe, eh, will be just literally going like, I honestly, is that actually true? And the thing is, that's why these interviews are so helpful, because Abe is giving you an insight into the worldview and perspective of a pioneer creative. I mean, uh, there's nothing that what he said so far that is in any way anomalous with actually the way he's made. But for those of you for whom fun is a much bigger thing, it's like, really, there are people like that? Well, the, the good news is there aren't many of them. I think the, the pioneer creative is one of the most rare personality types. I always look at it and go, I think kind of God realized he made something special and decided he wouldn't overdo it. So, you know, that, but you are a unique phenomenon. So you, you alluded to it a little bit because obviously the, I really love the way you talked about alignment and the, the chiropractic, chiropractor type role of getting people aligned, getting, and, and I kind of, I kind of can just about see you doing that. Yeah. But I, I love the fact that you very quickly or probably quickly began to go, okay, if I'm good at alignment, how do I begin to play perhaps on a, a bigger scale? Because yeah. chiropractor is by its very nature, one-to-one, -one, isn't it? You're, you're yeah. actually working with the individual, it's challenging your intellect, but I suspect you mastered it relatively quickly, and it's only people, leadership, culture that has the variables that would keep your brain interested for long periods of time. So let's use that as a bit of a segue into, so Giant obviously unlocks the potential of people all over the world. So how did you first come into contact with Giant? And particularly, when did you first realize that kind of look in the mirror and go, oh my goodness, I'm a pioneer creative and then some of the ahas of, of what yeah. that actually meant for you as an individual. So how do you connect with Giant? How have voices been profound? And give us some examples of what that self-revelation did for you. Yeah, you know, uh, in the world of where the nonprofit I was originally working with, uh, there were several different staff members that actually had been um, starting to uh, engage in Giant content. They were getting some training. But then I originally got uh, connected with Mark Herringshaw, which is he's kind of the original consultant with Giant. And we just had a lot of similarities. As a, he's also a pioneer as well. And uh, I was like, man, I want to do what you're doing, right? You're going <laughs> to different industries. You're engaging on culture and performance. You're you're doing things like in, inherently within a pioneer creator, I think, is we want to do something impactful. We want to change the world. We want to be able to touch many different things and scale it very strategically, be a trusted advisor. We don't want to just um, like see ourselves as a, a, like if I was saying the military, we don't want to be just a regular army person. We want to be in special forces going in covertly, impacting, yeah. coming out and being able to engage in a very strategic way. And, and I felt that, hey, what, what better way than to take all of my experience of development and, and mm -hmm. staff and organizational expertise mm -hmm. and take it mm -hmm. into now in a leadership platform where we can actually be able to engage in many different sectors and make impact. Yeah. All that makes complete sense. I, I love Mark, as you know. I mean, Mark, uh, we worked together in previous worlds, even for Giants. So massive fan of Mark and Jill. So that's that's always a big pedigree leap for me, but I can see why he'd be good for you. So, so Pioneer Creative, when did that first kind of really aha drop for you, Gabe, Abe? And what were some of the what were some of the moments when you were, oh my goodness? Because there's always that, there's always yeah. that kind of jaw-dropping moment when you realize not everyone's like me. 
and you begin to understand that actually you may well have caused some damage along the way or you understand mm -hmm. why I didn't connect with a certain individual or why there was a clash of this or yeah. so come on, talk to us a bit about that kind of the first moment when you went oh my goodness I'm a I'm a pioneer creative or I'm an INTJ which is obviously yeah. the other version of it but pioneer creative go on tell us a bit about that well, first of all, Steve, like uh, you're a hero in my eyes. I, I, you probably don't even know that, but you know, I've, I've been in the giant ecosystem for almost the last six years. It, it really started with getting into what we called it uh, equivalent to like X cores, like a leadership academy, yeah. and uh, got to be exposed to the content. And I, I'm very agnostic to systems and training development because I, I just live in that world. Yeah. But when I looked at Giant and the way they go about developing people, I, I just been baffled because I, I try to compare it to other systems. I look at any other personality frameworks as well as team development and just organizational, uh, just strategy and development over in the long run. I just can't compare it to what we actually have because not only has it brought self-awareness to the individual, it brings team awareness and as well as organizational organizational intelligence. And so, for me, um, as I engaged with it, uh, the first impact was actually in my own self. Right, I, I started to realize, especially uh, in helping um, myself to understand my dynamics within my family, my immediate family, my parents, for instance, it was a big aha. I was like, oh, that's why I have trouble with my nurturing father. And I actually really resonate with my my mom, who is a pioneer guardian, who yes. resonate with the pioneer. But we we fight with cats and dogs because she and I both love confrontation. But at the same time, we we totally get each other at the pace of life. We like to do things very fast in execution, and it just allowed me to understand all of my family dynamics. And it was like literally like matrix. I was able to finally see my relational dynamics in a in a way that just was able to, to make sense of all the things that I'm actually seeing out in the world, then it impacted my, my, my relationship with my wife. I married literally the opposite. Yeah. And so uh, a nurture connector creative. <laughs> that, I was like, man, if I knew that at the beginning of my marriage, yeah. I would have saved so much trouble and pain <laughs> because imagine uh, – seven years of not being able to understand that but yet now realizing wow my wife is doing things that naturally irritate me yeah. at my resting state and i do that too to her at a resting state and as a result i realized oh my gosh it's not really her trying to hurt me or she's trying to really irritate me is that just it's just her natural gift into the world that can be a curse if i don't acknowledge and i honor and yeah. see the beauty of that voice yeah. and that allowed me to the point where I, i'm able to work with her voice type i'm yeah. i'm able to work and enjoy and yeah. celebrate the other so much more and uh, that really started to impact in my, my my marriage overall and that i think there in itself was was more than enough right to understand your family background so you can actually see why you become the person you are today as yeah. well as just even the most important person you're significant other your wife, like to be able to understand her, uh, to give language to something that is sometimes subjective yeah. and, and to be able to have something concrete to be able to work with is, was very impactful for me. Well, what, what, what you do know, or I know, and listeners, you will know too, is that the pioneer creatives never tell you anything that's not true. And, uh, Abe, Abe would not be on here saying nice things if he didn't believe them with <laughs> absolute laser uh, clarity. So, I receive a the um the, the encouragement. I really do. It means a great deal. And I, I, I can sit here smiling thinking your wife only had to deal with it for eight years. I think Helen <laughs> had to deal with it for nearly twelve before we got to the point of realizing <laughs> that that we were also very, very different. And I think as well, um I love the fact you think that your nurturer can actually hurt you. I, I think kind of um most pioneers walking around in their Kevlar body armor with shoulder launch grenades are very rarely ever going to be hurt by a nurturer who only wants to care um, and look after people. So, um, yeah, I, I think the interesting thing, Abe, is that most people like you, yeah. like me, competence and mastery is everything. And almost giant finds a way in, I think, through self-awareness. And it's interesting how most of the reasons why people engage with it is like, I want my team to be better, I want the organizer, I want to win. Yeah. And then they suddenly realize it's like when they look in the mirror, they go, oh, this maybe has a bigger impact first in the family circle of influence, which is, oh, yeah. in all honesty, where most pioneers struggle because you don't have positional power 
your intellect doesn't solve the problem and no amount of um, earning money ever changes the fact that actually it isn't the same when the relational dynamics at home you you alluded to your you know your parents yeah. and your spouse and your kids and mm -hmm. I, I love that that's probably the the place when we talk about being a liberating leader when you can be a liberator as a pioneer in your home then i will guarantee you've reached the level of mastery which means your influence um in the team organizational cultural space will be so much greater because every pioneer i know abe has to function with humility and walk with a limp if other people are really going to receive from them the the expertise and the wisdom and the knowledge and the all that systemic brain power that you have never works unless people actually believe you're a human being first yeah. i would come back to ask the question is how does your wife who's wired for fun deal with a husband who's wired to work i'd love to know <laughs> how you've managed to make that one work if you want to yeah. play well, you know, when, when she plans out for fun, it's usually very spontaneous. And it's, it's, it's you know, uh, she's a huge uh, hospitality queen. So she loves to cook good food, have people over. And and I don't even know when when, when that's going to happen. So I just kind of <laughs> go with it. When it does happen, I just kind of roll with the punches. And so I think I, I, I kind of pioneer into it. But um, and so I, I, I don't know sometimes who's invited for, for lunch or dinner. And, and, and it, I just kind of roll with it. <laughs> so... And I love the fact that you've got to a point where you understand that for her, that's really important. And the thing is, when you can when you can create synergy with superpowers in a relationship, it doesn't really matter whether it's at home or in business or in team. It's amazing what happens, particularly when you can do that with people that are very different to you. Mm -hmm. So I always said that um, Helen and I do hospitality really well, not just because one of us or the other of us, but we play complementary roles in making people feel at home. I mean. Helen makes a home that looks and feels great. The food's amazing. Everything's cared for. But I actually kind of often then in the moment are able to speak or engage with people or just help them make breakthroughs. You know, So it, it's harnessing the combination of that. But I love the fact, Abe, that you, what probably in the beginning was like, well, why are you bringing these people over? Because they're not competent and they're not adding to the sum of my intellectual knowledge. But realizing that actually there was something more than that that you could and ultimately loving your wife in that. So that's so cool. Hey, I'm going to move on to the next part of this, which um, I know a lot of people sort of always say, this is really helpful. And they keep sending it to friends around the world and say, listen to this if you want to understand me. So we talk about if I was your boss. Now, I know for a pioneer creative, that's a little bit of an anathema because it's like, well, who in the world is competent enough to be my boss long term, perhaps partner? But if we were looking to create what we call a liberating culture, high support, high challenge, to help you be the best you could possibly be and fulfill all your potential. Um, can you give us some of the clues that you think, if I was gonna lead you well, what would high support, what would high challenge look like? And I think Tracy might put the, the visual up so people can see that, probably hopefully quite familiar now, that support challenge matrix, where we're trying to work out for each individual we lead, how do we create the opportunity for them to be at their best? but recognizing that some of you will be married to a pioneer creative, some of you will have children of pioneer creatives, some of you will be in a team, some of you will be in an organization. So you're always adding to the sum of your knowledge. So Abe, come on, if I'm gonna lead you well, if I'm gonna dare to lead um, SEAL Team Warrior, pioneer creative, uh, what do I need to know? How would What would high support or high challenge look like for you? Absolutely. We're such a futurist. Um, I think understanding the future uh, goals of a uh, pioneer creative is so important. If you can know the missions and the objectives and the desires of a pioneer creative, then you can really then uh, be able to align and become a very supporting force of good for them. Um, mm -hmm. If you totally miss that and you don't align the mission objectives of what the company is trying to shoot for to the mission objectives of the pioneer, then it's, you're going to start to find that very quietly, especially for the pioneer creative, very quietly, they'll start to do things and start to make inroads in areas that may not be aligned to your purposes. And they could quietly start to execute really quickly in that direction. You may wonder why they're maybe not aligned to what you are looking for. Um, challenge is something that they're always looking for. They're, they're always looking for competency from the boss. If you're not showing competency, if you're not showing credibility in your space and 
uh, being able to reveal that you are able to mentor them in certain areas and grow their skill sets uh, very, uh, very quickly, they're going to start to uh, maybe start to disrespect or not really acknowledge your, your authority over their life. One of the things that you can also bring support into calibrating support is give them space, right? Once you actually give them the scope of work, if you're trying to micromanage them in every single detail of how to go about doing things, they hate yeah. that because it feels like a straitjacket. They really like the freedom of it and, yeah. and the trust. If they have shown you a repeated ability to execute and to be able to follow through, they want the respect of give them the space to fully take dom dominion over their territory so that they can actually fully pioneer a way strategically in the way that makes sense to them. Um, but what you'll find is that immature pioneer creatives may not give you enough feedback loop in regards mm -hmm. to communication. And so you do need to make sure that you call them up to uh, challenge them up to say, hey, could you give me feedback and just update? Not that I don't trust you, but I just need to know what you're working on so that we can continue to align it into the right direction. And I think that's some type of challenge that you can give Pioneer Creators so that you can make sure that it's liberating not only to that person, but also to the organization and team. That's so helpful, Abe. Thank you. And I think just to add, if I'm thinking through the lens of going, I'm leading Abe, what do I, what do, the most important thing I think you alluded to is that I will only have influence to the extent that you trust my, ca my character and my competency and crucially my relevance to your world. So whenever you're going to, whenever we were meeting in any formal kind of review or touch base, you would expect me to have done the preparation for it that would match your level of dedication and commitment to the role. So um, nothing would annoy you more than having to spend time with a boss that hadn't really prepared what it was that actually we were going to cover and what those objectives were. And I suspect over the years you've had a number of those who, in some ways, it's easy to be intimidated by a pioneer creative's competence and excellence. But what they're really looking for is they want somebody to make them better. They want somebody they can respect but they have to respect the competence and you have to always show up as a professional in their world at the beginning mm -hmm. if you want to have the influence over them in the future. So uh, does that sound familiar, eh? Oh yeah, that sounds so <laughs> familiar. Like we, we have to understand that at the end of the day, if you don't build competency and credibility in my eyes first, like we can't be friends, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's often a prerequisite to yeah. actually start to build trust in the beginning. Yeah. And if that is not for first established, often we can't go deeper into it or because they, they don't have the relational capacity and the bandwidth mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. most of the other relational voice types. And so to be able to prioritize uh, that uh, relationship for a pioneer creative, they, they have to see that you are bringing immense value in a way that maybe they don't bring. And that mm -hmm. often allows them to really engage in that relationship even more so. Yeah, and I love what you, you you shared is the thing I'll always do with a pioneer creative is I need to understand what they hope their future looks like and almost give them permission to go, I know that you won't stay working with me for a long time because eventually you're going to take in everything I can teach you and then you're going to want new challenges and probably at some point you're going to want to be able to lead your own thing. So acknowledging I know that to a pioneer creative removes the sense of, oh my goodness, is Steve going to worry that I, I'm thinking in the end I'm probably going to be better at doing his job than he is, or that actually I hope I go beyond even the level he's gone with the competence. So the moment I kind of name that for a pioneer creative and go, Here's, here we go, I'm going to give you the opportunity to learn everything that I've mastered, and I'm going to help you not only learn and master that, but I'm going to encourage you to go beyond that and do things that I probably can't do because of the capacity you have. In the meantime, I'm going to give you the opportunity to make me look amazing with the quality of the work you're going to deliver because I'm going to give you the structure and the freedom to go after things that as you achieve them are going to be very, very focused and intentional in helping you get to your preferred future. So usually with a Pioneer Creative, I might only have you for two or three years. So I can either resent the fact that you're more ambitious, driven, and competent than I am, or I learn to create a win-win scenario where you go, Steve gets me. I don't have to try and sort of 
dumb down what I do, you will give, I suspect, everything to actually honour the fact that I've created an environment which you feel, uh, very rarely for most pioneer creatives, understood and critically it's okay to be as ambitious, competitive and driven as most pioneer creatives are. How does that sound, eh? Yeah, that sounds beautiful. Like I think sometimes, <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll find that for pioneer creatives, uh, they, they get bored after a while, right? Yeah. If, and if you can't be able to cast a vision and an umbrella of an opportunity where they can be able to live under, mm. you're gonna find them that they'll, they'll leave, right? Yeah. And if, if there's gonna be um, insecurity to kind of like hold down the reins and make them be part of the way that you need to do things all the time, then they're not gonna feel the full freedom to live under that tutelage and they'll have to find and cut their own path. But to create something that's more broad and allows other people to grow their skill set and their own leadership capacity and their own uh, presence in, in different sectors, that really allows them to really be who they are created to be. And, and the three other things that Abe, I, I have always for the pioneer creative, which is sometimes more difficult, is because they all have what I call perfectionist tendencies, because they have to come to terms with the fact that nobody is going to do it as well as they do it. And because you are almost omnicompetent, anything you want to master, you will. I mean, it's incredible. It's like usually pioneer creatives don't show up in public until they've already mastered the skill set. And their ability and their hard work, which usually means they end up, if they're not careful, intimidating the people around them and often end up doing lots of what other people's work should have been because people are almost fearful to hand in anything which is not as perfect as the pioneer creative wanted. So that, that kind of, I always say the challenge of the pioneer creative is to go, how do you learn to develop others who will never be as competent as you are without getting utterly frustrated with that process. Because if in the end you set the standard as this, you will probably end up doing it almost all of it yourself. And that really will wear out even the most um, committed pioneer creative. Ever seen that tendency, Abe? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think I think what's beautiful about just the giant system is that the, the beauty of understanding the other so much more uh, effectively, mm -hmm. because Scaling into people requires that you not only know yourself, but also the other person so that you don't do a prescription of uh, multiplying a succession plan that actually may not work for that person because it's not sharing your, your wiring type. And so for me, I think I had to learn uh, yeah. to, to really contextualize for the needs of others and to be able to speak in a language and coach them in a way that they they will be able to understand that. And if I didn't have that framework, honestly, I probably would have just done it in the way that I would normally do it. And I would be so totally undermining my influence as I do it and maybe bring a lot of challenge to voices that are di very different from me, right? And so, um, yeah. And I think, you know, you, when you described in, in your introduction that in some ways fun for you is reading in order to become more competent, there's a lot of, you know, of our millions of people listening around the world. Um, there's some raised eyebrows by at least 50% of the world's population who are wired to be human beings <laughs> before they are human doings. Yeah. Um, so in a sense, the challenge with my pioneer creatives is, is never to intellectual mastery or discipline. It's always towards being able to lead others who are not as competent as you and learning how to create a liberating culture for them as well. But the other one is, is really learning how to connect with people at a relational level, which is not always strategic, because the limit to your influence in terms of organizational progression is never going to be competence, but it will always be to do with influence, which actually for many people requires the fact, is a prepared to waste time with me, to get to know me, to actually in many ways for some people go to actually have some fun which is not task related now i know the way you're wired you can't do that for lots of people but what you have to do and this is where i love characters like you Abe, if i if i challenge you as a competency level and you know i'm more competent than you are then actually the moment you go okay steve i hear the challenge i will go away and find a way to be more um relax with people i'll find a way to do more of the chemistry i'll find a way to have fun i'm not really sure i understand it at best it will be conscious competence but i'm going to learn to be vulnerable 
And that's the thing I always say to my pioneer creatives is everyone knows you're competent and they know that you will deliver for them, but yeah. they're not sure they ever really know you yeah. because in the end, you don't let them in to the vulnerability. What they see is the omnicompetence and they're grateful for it, yeah. but your influence goes to another level when people see, oh, Abe is actually human as well as the person he is. So, you know, though it sounds strange, it's you almost have to learn to own your weakness and vulnerability. Yeah. And the more you share it, actually, it becomes a way of attracting and drawing people to you. Talk to me a little bit about that, Abe. Steve, that's brilliant. Um, I mean, if you imagine we're living in a pandemic right now and being able to elevate a nurturing voice, which is all about care and vulnerability yeah. and even sharing your own vulnerability is such a powerful thing to do in this time. Yeah. I think pioneers need to lead with that right now. Yeah. Yeah. And not always be, yes, they, they can lead with this winning, resilient strategy and let's get it, right? Let's break through this hard times. But at the same time, they need to also be like, hey, like, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. This is how I'm feeling right now. I'm struggling. Yes. I'm a human being. I'm wrestling with these type of things. Are you wrestling with that? And being yeah. able to, to go with that actually builds so much rapport. I think it's something that we have to always be intentional in to yeah. move in transparency and vulnerability. And just... The, Anytime there is probably the, the breakthrough leadership moments is probably when we actually lead in that way, because mm. it is something that is not always common. Everyone knows that we're competent and credible. They don't know if they really care about mm. us or if we have a, a, a human level where they can actually resonate and connect with, because we are always speaking in such a high level or performance. Mm. They're wondering, hey, are you even human? Can you connect with me? And when we actually sh show that uh, vulnerability as we, uh, engage with people that allows people to feel like they, they can relate. And that's huge. I think in, in the time that we're living in right now. There you go. What I love is that you did the last thing for me, which is pioneer creatives will almost always end up being your teacher and consultant as well, even if you're leading them. So in a <laughs> sense it, it, and you have to create space for that. So I'd always be saying um, to Abe, Hey, every month or so, you know, we're going to go out and have lunch and I'm going to sit, and you're going to be my coach. So I want you to go, what are you seeing in me? What are you seeing in the business? What are you, where are we missing things? Where's the opportunity? If you were in my seat right now, where would you be focusing? Where would you be, where would you be investing time, effort? Where would money be going right now? Because for some people, that's a stress. Like, oh my goodness, Steve wants me to be on show. Whereas for a pioneer creative, what I'm doing is saying, I, I value you and the competence you bring and I'm open to receiving that from you, even from the position of putting you in many ways as the coach consultant over me um, occasionally. And, and most pioneer creators I know, um, that's a really important thing that they feel they have permission to do that. So I know yeah. we've labored this one, but here's the thing. Most of the people watching this say they don't get this voice because the yeah. pioneer creative doesn't give themselves away that often. But actually, when they understand it, they go, oh, it all makes sense. And there'll be people going, ahas, all over the place as they watch this going, no wonder I struggled with so-and-so or yeah. it was difficult. So, you know, there, there we go. I think that's probably um, a pretty – but the, the question is, if I did all those things, would I be a good boss for you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and and I, actually, that kind of segues way into a, a question that I would love to ask you, Steve. Um, mm. <clears throat> you know, I've been really uh, niching down – especially in helping create more inclusive leadership competencies in organizations. We've mm -hmm. engaged with, you know, high level companies like Google, Bristol Myers Squibb, um, 3M, and really helping them to think through a, like a DNI strategy mm -hmm. uh, that really helps them to take all the things that we do, right? You imagine the DNI objectives are mm -hmm. in the diversity, equity, inclusion world. They're trying to create psychological safety, inclusive mm. leadership competencies, help them to know their unconscious biases, help mm. them to be able to connect that to their business alignment and execution. And I think, honestly, Giant has such a strategic space in engaging that world. Yeah. Um, for you, as you think about just uh, that context, like how have you see Giant really fit into that context? And why do you think... Uh, what we have is part of the most world-class thing to actually be a, a solution <laughs> in that world. I love it. It's like, you're asking me questions now. You're like, this is a whole <laughs> new world. So, so here's, here, here's what I would say is to go, 
Uh, though pioneers make up 7% of the population statistically, if you were to look at senior leadership roles in um, particularly for-profit corporate where winning and competing is allowed, you'll find that actually um, at the very highest level, there are a lot of pioneers. And in a sense, therefore, their issue is not competence and strategy. Um, there's very little to contribute in, in, you know, actually the analysis of how we turn return on capital invest in something that shareholders will reward us for. But every pioneer actually needs to develop self-awareness in order that they may be able to deliver some of the things that you've just talked about and be aware of. So for me, I often go that um, the simple thing of being able to celebrate diversity and difference, not out of tokenism because it's what HR says, yeah. but because you actually believe it with all your worth, mm -hmm. um, that's a moment when, when a pioneer can genuinely say, I would never go live with anything that I haven't run by my nurturers and my guardians. Mm. Then you know that something amazing has happened for the simple reason is most pioneers don't think like that in the beginning. So, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I sometimes struggle with all of the political correctness, if I'm honest. Um, but what I do say is to go, do you know, sometimes what I've watched these organizations, everyone ends up in their own separate silo. So everyone has a club for whether you're this nationality, this ethnicity, this sexuality, this orientation, whatever it might be. And and I've often said to people, go, I love that. And I think it's really important we do that. But I would rather celebrate diversity in the contribution we make to the work we do first mm -hmm. and then deal with our individuality, which actually then when it's come through the lens of I'm now appreciating you, Abe, as a pioneer creative who's bringing this skill set to the team. I'm then able to deal with the fact, well, you might be of this ethnicity, this, you know, whatever it is. And all of a sudden then I'm, I'm dealing with you first as a colleague and a teammate helping to us to win together yeah. rather than starting with, okay, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. And I've now, I'm automatically on my guard and I'm almost automatically afraid of sometimes saying anything for fear of yeah. causing offense. Yeah. So the yeah. moment we learn to actually do life well together in a team, I'm then more than open, and usually people are more forgiving of the individual, you know, things when they've actually learned to appreciate what the other person brings its best. But you know, we could probably go on on that for a long time, and I really want to ask the, the last question to you, Abe, today because I, mm -hmm. I'm a for a fact, I'm really fascinated to hear it, and I love, you know, hearing what you've taken and done because you will take what Jeremy and I created and the team of them built on, and you will go and pioneer frontiers that we never could have done. And I think that's the joy almost of, of mature pioneers is actually celebrating those who go beyond you. And for most pioneers, that's not something that comes naturally when they're, when they're younger. But you realize that actually um, there's probably more reward in watching those you've invested in go further than you. But mm -hmm. here's my question, Abe, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's assume that you and I are going to partner on something. OK, so all of your practical responsibilities for your four boys, your, you know, 401ks, that I'm sure you've been paying into their college funds, their wedding funds, whatever else you've been doing. I will take care of all of that. Whatever your number is per month, oh, index link, <laughs> I will go, you know, here's here's three hundred thousand dollars index right. link for the rest of your life. But what we're going to do is we're going to do something that you would choose to do if there was no obligation, if there was just out of, if I could make a dent in the universe with my life, this is what I'd most love to be doing. And assume that money will not be the reason we don't do it. And every relationship that's represented in the global giant ecosystem and every network of connection is gonna help us with whatever it is we decide to do. So dreaming big, which is probably not a huge challenge to the Pioneer Creative Fab is to go, if that was the case and you could live into that world where there were no prohibitions, there's no inhibitions, what would the type of thing you'd most love to do or what would we be partnering on to build into the future? Yeah. You know, uh, first of all, thank you, because that's, that's a beautiful question for any <laughs> pioneers to have that scenario. And you would love to, to, to just go hours and talk about that. Um, I think it, it's touching a little bit about the question that I already asked you. You know, I, I really believe uh, Giant has a huge solution for this whole uh, cultural wars, wars that we're living in, right? The DNI space. I feel like we have one, the silver bullet for this whole inclusive leadership competencies to be built, 
but also yeah. touch and connect it to the business alignment and integrate that into the outcomes. And what, what better way to do that with, with an operating system for people and also letting people to uh, letting data to drive all those development and training. I think a lot of times when people um, get tasked or they're being judged with some type of performance issues, uh, mm -hmm. there's really no corresponding support system that really gives them uh, mm -hmm. team workshops and tools and uh, coaching and resources for that. So for me really is, uh, I see a huge cr uh, creative opportunity into the future this opportunity to really be a solution to something that I feel like has been a pain point in our cultural mm -hmm. history right now, uh, in the aspect of just how do you allow other voices to be truly heard and mm -hmm. make every voice feel honored and feel connected to the business where they feel they belong. But also yeah. as, as, a, as an executive, you're thinking through, okay, well, yes, I wanna be able to, to empower people, but how does that really help with the ROI of the business? I think mm -hmm. we have that not only through a technology, but we have that with coaching consulting. So for me, that's what I would love to do is really be able to scale into companies organization, really be a solution for that. I think right now, most companies are starting to become aware that this is an issue and they're really trying to take some areas of compliance and stride and helping making sure that on a legal le mm -hmm. level, they're actually complying. But I think they're gonna come to a point where they, they have to see that as a cultural movement within their organization. And that requires immense uh, systems and strategy and integration for that mm -hmm. to actually happen. I think on a compliance level, it's really easy. It's easy to change the veneer of the legal stuff and the language and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. actually changing the character, the DNA of a company organization is going to require uh, mm -hmm. time and energy and strategy and systems and tools. And I think we have that. And so really, that would be my pioneering thing is like, hey, we want to tackle this issue. Wow. We call it DNI. And we believe that we can touch it in regards to your business outcomes at the, in the long term. And so I would love to partner and scale that and be that that solution. I think other other um, spaces and other consultants that engage it, it's very one dimensional. They either have some assessments, they either have some type of uh, one off, you know, workshops. But we have a full on system to create that inclusive leadership competency. So for me, I, I want to be taking yeah. that line share and saying we can be able to engage that problem and be a solution yeah. to that. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Abe. I mean, I think it's quite humbling uh, for me because I know that I know you, I know that is what you want to do. And I'm no doubt that it's what you will do. I think the fact for me is that there's a, there's enough space and freedom and autonomy and recognition that within the giant family, you're almost saying I'm happy to build it with you. I don't feel I have to build it in competition to you. Um, so in a sense, I go, I think there are the cultural piece and the that in some senses, there's enough, there's enough pioneering frontier that we haven't really gone to yet. But the fact that you're choosing as a pioneer creative to say, I'd rather do that with an elite group of Navy SEALs inside the giant ecosystem and actually help build that. Um, I wasn't necessarily expecting that, but, I hear it and in some ways is a an amazing affirmation of what what the team have created mm -hmm. because if it can create a home for people like you where you feel you can belong but you also have the freedom to pioneer without having to be on your own yeah. that would be huge the only thing I'll always say to you is to go um, who are you apprenticing on the way so for me the challenge will always be you can do it mm -hmm. but the unconscious competence of a pioneer creative is so high the only way you other people will ever get access to it is because you have to train two or three people in your unconscious competence. Yeah. So that's the bit for me of going, you'll always be the tip of the spear. You'll always want to be on the frontier. You'll only ever have a small group of people that you work with who are as competent as you are or have at least the potential to be so. So I'm not asking you to build a huge thing, but I would say make sure that every you know three years or so, there are three people who orbit and come in and they're high enough caliber that they can actually do the things you do in the end. And that's probably another place where you'll begin to grow, not just your competency, but your influence. Yeah. Because when you've multiplied your unconscious competence into others and they're then able to do it, and they yeah. may not go further than you, but that's always the ideal. They always credit you a, with something far more than you deserve. So I get credited, Jeremy gets credited with far more than we deserve 
Yeah. Because what we've really done is found a way to give ourselves away. But there mm -hmm. are people who say, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if you hadn't taken the time to invest significant time, talent, and treasure in us. So yeah. I'm all in, Abe. I mean, I, I, that's like, we're doing it. We'll do more of it. And I, yeah. I hope you and I can um, collaborate more because I'm sure there are things, uh, absolutely certain, there are things that you've now learned and are going to learn, which we value for the whole family. But I just want to say would, thank I you. I would credit that to Giant in regards to um, any, any strategy or intentionality to multiply. It really comes from Giant's DNA of, really helping organizations to multiply and think through apprenticeship and succession mm -hmm. planning. I think that's something that is really high in my um, regards mm -hmm. of what I see what Giant does for organizations and teams and leaders. Um, I know that um, there's this maxim that I always kind of try to hold on to because I know as pioneers, I can be going top of the mountain and conquer it. And if there's no one around me, it's a failure because mm -hmm. it's, it's not fun at the end if you're conquering the mountains and, and there's no one around to celebrate with. So wow. it's always better together uh, versus <laughs> doing things alone in the long run. And I've, I've actually seen that, right? I've seen that in my history where I, I would be able to push forward really fast, but there's no one around me. And that's not fun at the end. <laughs> and so to be able to do that with a tribe of people that really have the same mission and objective is such a valuable gift for me to be able to, to partner with people like you and Giant as a, as a community to engage in that way. Well, guys, it's not always a, a political broadcast on behalf of the giant world, but uh, <laughs> Abe, Abe has, Abe has uh, drunk the cool juice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and and when a pioneer creative does that, that it, there's not a lot you can do about it because I promise you they will not say it just because they think it's what you want to hear. It's because it's actually coming out of deep conviction of who they are. So um, I love that. It's a celebration. Please you know, find Abe on, on LinkedIn. If you're a pioneer, find me as well. well we're always happy to kind of help others view, particularly if you go, I think I'm a bit like that, but I've not learned the level of self-awareness and humility that you've heard from Abe today. So um, that's the end of the Pioneer Creative um, voice interview. Well, I think we've done 10 now. So uh, we'll look forward to the next one. But Abe, what a great guest. Thank you for being so honest and real with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time on Personality Yoda.